Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Boost! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available tomorrow, 2024, the album. Dad, shimmy, shimmy, ab. <clears throat> Rock on gold dust. Rhiannon rings like a bell through the night and wouldn't you love to love her? Players only love you when they're playing. Boost! And I said tomorrow night, and I meant to, well, I said tomorrow. I meant tomorrow night. <laughs> and I said tomorrow because, listen, Linda, listen, Linda, the whole world right now is trying to get on waiting lists for Taylor Swift. Me? Well, I'm a different story. Last night, I was trying desperately to get the best seats in the house for Stevie Nicks tomorrow night. I'm going to see Stevie Nicks in Indianapolis tomorrow night. Oh my God, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I've been listening to all the songs to make sure I know all the words. <laughs> as if. As if I don't know all this, the words to Leather and Lace and Nightbird and Lay and Slide and on and on and on. I know all the words to all the Stevie Nicks songs. I cannot wait, okay? And my husband... He's not so much of a Stevie Nicks fan, but he was the one. I didn't even know she was coming to town. And he was at the open house yesterday. People get very confused with this open house thing. As I was talking about this on my vlog, and people are like, what is, are they looking for a house? What are they talking about open house? So I don't know where else in the world, but in Indiana, we call graduation parties now open houses. I actually read a definition on my vlog last night. This is an open house is like a walkthrough party where you can come from any time from like four to six or four to ten or whatever. Anyway, my husband was at this open house for his co-worker's daughter that graduated um, yesterday. She graduated this weekend, so her open house was yesterday. And he texted me and he goes, do you want to go to Stevie Nicks on Tuesday night? I was like, what? And he goes, Stevie Nicks is in town on Tuesday night. And he goes, I know how much you love her. I was like, you are speaking my love language to me, right? Do I want to go see Stevie Nicks? I have not seen Stevie Nicks since 1987 at Market Square Arena. Actually, I think I looked it up one time. I think it was 1990. It was either 1987. I think it was 1990 at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Indiana. And it was with Fleetwood Mac, actually. It was Fleetwood Mac. But Stevie, listen, okay, I have never in my life seen so many Stevie Nicks lookalikes. I don't know what the concerts are like today, but I was trying to prepare my husband for it last night. I said, listen, I said, you are going to see fringed hair from the 80s, bangs, shawls, knee-high boots, and people are going to throw teddy bears and roses on stage at Stevie Nicks. And he goes, why do they throw roses and teddy I go, it's Stevie Nicks. You don't need to ask any questions. <laughs> and he goes, what are you going to wear for it? I go, uh, duh, jeans and a Stevie Nicks t-shirt. What else would you wear to a Stevie Nicks concert? I go, what are you going to wear? And he goes, I don't know, something witchy. <laughs> because, see, he knows. He knows the assignment. My husband is somebody that knows the assignment. Assignment, all right. I mean, he only knows Stevie Nicks because she was in the show Coven on American Horror Story and all that kind of stuff. That's how he knows Stevie Nicks. But that's enough, okay? Because Stevie, listen, if you ever, did you ever hear the song Rhiannon? Okay, that's that's about a witch, all right. Stevie Nicks has been witchy since 1975, okay? So listen, he got the assignment. I said, you gonna wear a shawl or a cape or something like that? He goes, I think something. I said, listen, I got 15 Stevie Nicks t-shirts if you want to borrow one. He goes, you got one in black? I was like, is that even a question? <laughs> is that a rhetorical question? Are we asking stupid questions today? I am so excited, okay? Listen, I, listen, we go to a lot of shows. We go to a lot of EDM shows. I've been to a lot of concerts in my life, but I am so excited. My mom bought me Stevie Nicks concerts, and then Stevie canceled her concert years and years and years ago. I've tried on like four occasions to go see Stevie Nicks, and it never happens, okay? So, God, God willing, I will be Stevie, seeing Stevie Nicks, and we got great seats. We, I'm like, I'm like right there. I was telling my friend, Tom Jean, last night. She's like, well, where are you at? I was like, if Stevie's standing on stage, I am like right at 10 o'clock. She's like, oh my God, she's gonna see you. I said, I'm, I'm gonna wear my t-shirt tomorrow night. I can't wait. Oh my God. I'm gonna say, Alex said to me last night, he goes, I don't hardly know any of her songs. I won't know any of the words. I said, trust me, you will know the songs once you hear them, okay? I am so excited. I'm going to see Stevie Nicks. I can't wait. The other thing that I can't wait, and this is why I'm like filming this video, and this is like an OG drama video. I'm going to try to make her short today, but you know how that always goes. I always say that, and then it never happens. It's because I got to go to the pool. It's 85, and it's sunny outside, so I'm like, I'm going to film a couple videos, and then I'm going to go to the pool, 
And then when I come back, I'm gonna film my vlog. See, it's perfect summer. Perfect summer. I need more lip gloss because I'm so excited about Stevie Nicks. Of course, I'm gonna have to take my glitter lip gloss for uh, Stevie Nicks. Oh my God. What if I get a meter? Oh my God, I would die. I would die. I would faint a million faints, like I used to say. Anyway, yes, I'm going to Stevie Nicks. Don't be jealous. Oh my God, I should have brought my tambourine. Do you think they'll let me in with a tambourine? Oh my God, can you imagine me just up there tambourine in a way with Stevie? She'll probably call me on stage. Oh my God, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I cannot believe I'm going to see Stevie Nicks Trump. Anyway. So, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Well, have you guys been watching my Peter Watches TV channel? Oh my God, I'm having so much fun over there. So, Peter Watches TV, which was formerly Peter's Reality TV Recaps and Opinions, formerly, and that's my opinion, with Peter Mike. A little nod to Tamara from the Real Housewives of Orange County. Anyway, it used to be all reality TV. Now I'm covering all kinds of shows. So, like, today or tomorrow, I'm going to cover Eric, because I just finished that show. Um over on uh, the Netflix. I was just like looking at the Netflix. Speaking of shows I'm going to cover over here. And uh, I was like, I have watched the majority of the shows that are on the top 10. So that was kind of my goal to like cover all the shows that are on the top 10 of Netflix. Hold on, I'm pulling it up right now. My Netflix on my phone is pretty slow. So anyway, um, I was like, I'm going to start covering all the shows that are on the Netflix top 10. So here they are. Number one, Dancing for the Devil. I just did my video about the uh, 7M management company TikTok dancers. I did that video over there on uh, my Peter Watches TV channel. So if you want to hear what I have to say, I'm probably going to bring that over here too and do some drama about that. Um, Eric, I finished that the other night. Your Honor. Well, that's it. They brought that over from Showtime. I didn't watch them two seasons back in the day. That is fantastic. That is such a great show. Bridgerton, already watched it. Waiting for June 13th for it to come out. Already watched that. Geek Girl. I like looked at the trailer for that last night. It's like one of those Jenny Hand books where somebody becomes a fashion model and then she falls in love with a the guy. Then she decides she doesn't want the world handed to her on a silver platter. So she decides to go back to school, but this guy still loves her kind of show. I could care less about all that. Okay. And then Tires. I heard that's really good. I haven't watched that. Raising Voices. That's on my list. Some kids Jurassic Park show. I don't know. I don't know nothing about her. Ashley Madison. Well, I did that video over here a couple days ago talking about Sam and Nia. Oh my God. The Christian Family Vlogging Channel. But when you're a Christian family vlogging channel and you cheat and you go to strip clubs and you, uh, and, hey, listen, I don't, I don't judge nobody. I lived with my fair share of dancers. I've been to strip clubs and things like that. Do you? Okay. But when your wife don't know about it and she's at home kicking, uh, cooking, uh, you know, ham and beans for the kids and things like that, thinking that you're going to church and being a good Christian and you're going to strip clubs with your churchy friends. And then you're also hitting on your wife's friends to the point where they can't even be friends with her anymore because they don't know how to tell you that your good Christian man is actually a cheater. Okay. I I guess when you're a Christian family vlogging channel, what do you do with that pile of shit? You turn it into a turd sandwich, you eat it, you spit out a novel or a book. It's a novel because it's fiction, okay? Because it's about how he's changed when in reality he hasn't really changed at all. So you like spit out this turd sandwich, you know? And that turd sandwich is, let's turn that scandal into seeing how much money we can make. Let's post as many videos about it on our family vlogging channel. Let's in one second be talking about how I was trying to do some married uh, lady up on the Ashley Madison. And then let's show our kids in the next picture shouldn't we? That's a Christian family vlogging channel for you right there. Oh, I'm not done talking about them Christian family vlogging channels. Trust, okay? I said 2024 was going to be my year to talk about them. I'm talking about them Christian family vlogging channels, okay? So if you're a Christian family vlogging channel out there, strap on your depends because I'm coming for you, okay? So anyway, um, and then what's the next show on there? Uh, uh, Queen Charlotte. Now, I haven't seen Queen Charlotte months ago. Oh, my God. Queen Charlotte's the best thing that ever happened to Bridgerton. I love the spinoff Queen Charlotte. So good, wasn't it? So anyway, last night I started watching, I got a bunch of shows on my list. I got a summer uh, 2024 binge list, okay? Now we got old ones on there. We got like Grey's Anatomy, Ozark, because it's some of the shows I haven't seen, right? We got uh, a Sister Wives I'm going to be covering when it comes back out in the fall, things like that. But I've been like watching all these shows that like are one season. So I started Bodkin last night. Y'all watch this show? This show, don't, don't sleep on this show. It's got that guy in it that was on that comedy. I don't really like comedies, but I love this one called The Last Man on Earth. It's so good. Oh my God, did you ever watch it? It's so good. Anyway, it's like if the world ended and he's like the last one left, but he's not really the last one left because there's a bunch of other people and he gets married and things like that. But anyway, he's on it and it's about, it's like this comedy thriller that takes place in Ireland. It is fantastic. It is so good. I got three more episodes left to watch. So I was watching that last night, 
And I'm like scrolling through my Instagram DMs and things like that. Y'all are so nice to send me some tea and the Instagram DMs. I just really appreciate it so much. Oh, thank you. Did I say I have to go to the pool? I have to go to the pool. It is 85 degrees outside. My pool crew ladies are waiting for me, okay? They're like, we're going to wait for you to finish these videos and we're going to go to the pool. I'm like, okay. We're going to the pool. I can't wait. So anyway, this is the first day that the pool crew, crew ladies are going to the pool. We got lots of HOA drama to talk about, okay? A lot of HOA drama. I cannot wait, okay? I cannot wait to be drinking coffee in the shallow end with my pool crew ladies talking about the Homeowners Association drama. I cannot wait to talk about it. Listen, that is better than a drama video any day. I should have set up a camera and just show us all talking in the pool, shouldn't I? But anyway, so um, I was like throwing, scrolling through my Instagram DMs. Y'all, let me just tell you, people send me, okay, this is what I now people send me. They all send me like Instagrams and TikToks of rescue animals, rescue dogs and squirrels, because y'all know I love Thumbelina the squirrel so much. Thumbelina had to have operation last week. I had to settle my little dog, Boo Radley, down. He was so upset about it. I said, Boo Radley, Thumbelina's going to be all right. She's going to be just fine. He was so upset about it. She had an abscess on her tooth and things like that because she has to get her teeth, like, filed down, stuff like that, because she don't live outside, see? And so, usually, squirrels, they, like, file their own teeth down, like, by, you know, trees and things like that, but she don't do that. And so, she had an abscess, and she had to go in there, and it's like, oh, she had surgery. I felt so bad. Little Thumbelina, the squirrel, she has had so many surgeries. She just inspires me every day. I love that squirrel so much. I love those people. I love the fact that they are telling her story, okay? And this little sweet squirrel inspires and motivates me every single day, okay? That's where our focus in the world should be. None of this other nonsense that I'm going to talk about today on here. But anyway, I was reading through my DMs. People are so nice. They always send me the nicest little stories and tell me about their lives and things like that. I appreciate it. But every once in a while, somebody sends me some tea. Now, if you want to send me some tea and you want to get a shout out on this, um, I'll ask you, like, if you send me tea, I'll be like, if I use this in a video, do you want to shout at it? Because if, if you're the first person, because usually, like, once somebody sends it to me, then, like, 40 people send this to me. So this was the first person that sent it to me. I got a lot of DMs after this, okay? So I want to give a shout out to Tanya. Hey, Tanya, girl! Not my Tanya, okay? Not my Tanya Jean. And this Tanya, she spells her name a different way than my Tanya Jean spells it. But it's Tanya all the way around. It don't matter, okay? That's a great name, okay? So she, I said, do you want to shout out if I do this in a video? She goes, yes! I was like, oh my god, somebody's finally excited because usually people are like, no, don't say my name in a video. I'm like, I'm not going to say your last name and social security number. Are you kidding me? I'm just going to say like Lisa or Tina. <laughs> Tina, I love that name so much, don't you? What are other names I like? Oh my lord. I, Judy. G you know, Judy and Sally Smith. I love those names so much. But anyway, Cheyenne. I always wanted to be a Cheyenne. I think I'd make a good Cheyenne or Montana, don't you think? No. Or maybe like that was going to be, speaking of strippers, back in the day, we'd always come up with like stripper names and we'd do like that with our hair and stuff like that. Because you know, I had roommates. My, my roommates were dancers. We don't call them strippers. We call them dancers. Some of the other day in my secrets video, she said, uh, she, her, her uh, secret was, she goes, I'm a hooker. And I was like, oh my God, TJ Hooker. <laughs> Can we say that in 2024? I mean, is that sex positive to say you're a hooker? I live for that all day long, okay? Because I love that word. That's like the happy hooker goes to Hollywood. Do you remember all them dirty movies on Skidamax late at night? Way back when we were growing up back in the day, the happy hooker goes to D.C., the happy hooker. I love that word so much, hooker. I'm telling you right now, if I was an escort, I would not be a paid escort. I would not be a high-end escort, an OF model. No, straight up, I'd be a hooker. <laughs> What do you do for a living? I'm a hooker. That's what I would be all day long. Hooker. I live for that. I love that I got that as a secret. She just said, I'm a hooker. I was like, all right, girl, you a hooker. All right. I live for that. So anyway, so uh, uh, who was I talking about now? Oh, Tanya. Ta not Tanya Jean, but my friend Tanya that sent, well, my good Judy Tanya Jean. Not my good Judy Tanya Jean. My good Judy Tanya that sent me some tea about Miss Jacqueline Hill. So she sends me this, right? And I am so lazy, I didn't even want to look it up. So I was like, was this in a live stream? She sent me a link straight to the TikTok. I was like, all right, thanks, girl. So here's the, here's the tea. Where are we at right now? Oh, my, this is going to be a short video today. <laughs> oh, my God, I got my new reading glasses. If y'all, listen, if you're not watching my channel, Peter Does Stuff, what are you doing with your life? I do, like, hauls every single day over there, okay? It's like, it's like 2008 YouTube. I do hauls. And I just bought three pairs of new reading glasses from, hold on a second. Not sponsored, Caddis, my favorite reading glasses. This is our new box. I love this. And these are my new reading glasses. What do we think? I bought three new pairs of reading glasses. What do, you, what do we think of these? I think these are kind of cute. I mean, they age me up. I look about 64, don't I? And I look like I'm, like, teaching, I don't know, Victorian literature <laughs> at Clemson or something. I'll take that. Hey, I'll take that all day long. Drama channel or professor at Clemson. <laughs> I'll take Professor at Clemson for $200. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, I kind of like these though. Hey, hey. I mean, they're smaller because these are like the other ones. I Look how big these are. I mean, these are called, these are the D28s. What are these called? What's she called? Oh, I got to put my reading glasses on to even read them. These are called 
the Wabi Sabis. I, I don't know anything about these, but I think these are kind of cute, don't you? Okay, hey. <laughs> I cast a spell on you. I feel like a magician or something in these. But anyway, I know that don't make any sense to you. It makes sense to me. That's all that matters. So anyway, Tanya sent me this uh, TikTok that Jaclyn Hill did, okay? And it's about all her beauty favorites. Now, I was going to spread this into two videos, but I think I'm just going to make one video and we'll just make it a little bit longer over here today. Okay, so I'm watching this TikTok, okay? Because she sends me first the comments, okay? Where Miss Jaclyn Hill is shading... Uh, Michaela Nagara. Now, this is where I love a good read, okay? Every once in a while, like, I love a little shade. And Jacqueline Hill's good for it, okay? Like, she knows how to do shade and still kind of stay like, oh, I was just joking, girl. What are you talking about? That's the true definition of a mean girl, okay? Just so we can make this clear. A mean girl is somebody that will totally shade you to your face but won't own it, okay? Like, when you call her on it, she'll be like, oh, girl, I was just joking. What are you talking about, right? <laughs> See, the way that I grew up with a bunch of drag queens when I came out of 18, happy Pride Month, by the way. Um, when I grew up, like, if somebody shades you to your face, you'd, be like, you'd look at that person, you'd be like, are you shading me? Are you reading me, girl? And they'd be like, uh-huh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Now, you need to take that blouse off. That is an ugly blouse, okay? Where'd you get her? Thrifty threads? Take that blouse off, all right? Now, listen, that's where these people, like, they, they shade, but then they run from their shade, okay? They're not real honest with their shade. I live for people that are kind of honest with their shade, if you want to know the truth. Okay, so... I'm watching this thing, and Jaclyn Hill is in there, and she's talking about this beauty. She's going to do a beauty favorites, okay? I'm like, oh, okay, girl. And she's like, at the, I mean, within 10 seconds, she's like, you know, I'm a beauty girl. Like, at my favorites, I'm always like, uh, like, I'm always about my beauty favorites. I'm a beauty girl at heart. I'm like, oh, wait, wait, wait a second, girl. You are? <laughs> You're a beauty girl? Because you literally just came out. And your TikToks, as I covered this, like, two weeks ago, where you're sitting in your car and you talked about how you fell out of love with makeup. I just covered that. Girl, I still got the TikToks on my phone. In fact, this going to be the, the week of... This, this is, like, a, what was that? Rex... What's that Rex Day on that movie? What's that movie about? Uh, Empire Records. you remember that? And it's, like, Rex Manning Day? Rex, this is, like, Jaclyn Hill Day, okay? It's going to be Jaclyn Hill Week. I'm going to make me a couple videos about this, okay? Because she... Complete, this is where Jacqueline Hill says she's not a liar, but she contradicts herself 100%. And, and she, this is the other thing, right? Like, if she wanted to come out and somebody called her on it, and she goes, yeah, absolutely, two weeks ago, I said that uh, I, I was over makeup, and now I'm saying that I'm, I've always, in my heart of hearts, been a beauty girl. I totally own the hypocrisy. I have never, in my, on my channel, ever shied away from the fact that I'm the world's biggest hypocrite. Okay, you can go back to my first year of making videos. I said it then, and I'll say it now, right? I changed my opinion. I changed my mind from one minute to the next. I might say something tomorrow that contradicts what I say today. But I'll own it all day long, 100%, right? I'm not going to bullshit about that. But she just got in this video, okay? Well, she's drinking all the coffee in the car, and she's shading people, and people are guessing if she's Colleen. Who's she shading? Is she shading Colleen? And she's talking that... I still got him in my phone. <laughs> Have I said that already? I'm going to do a whole video about that. Because in that video, she said she's not really into makeup anymore because the downfall of her beauty brand really devastated her. And so she's not really into makeup anymore. Now you're on TikTok. That was an Instagram story. Now you're on TikTok and you're talking about how in your heart of hearts you've always been a beauty girl. I thought you just said you weren't, girl. Okay? And I'm, I'm so confused about this, right? So then she's in there and she's doing all the, she's showing all this makeup, right? And she shows this brand. It's called, it's T-I-R-T. -T it's a turd, turd. <laughs> Smell like shit. Is that what it smells like, girl? It's called Tur Tur or Tear Tear or something like that, okay? And uh, this, now, there's a little backstory to this. Tur Tur brand, okay? I don't know nothing about her. I never heard about her until Michaela Nagara got a Birkin from them, okay? And this is, this is the story, okay? Is that Michaela Nagara, okay, got sent their makeup. She did a review of their makeup, non-disclosed, okay? The video went viral, <clears throat> So, now, we know about, I'm not, I'm not saying that she did, but it would be very lucrative for her if she did, okay? That the video went viral, all right? And she's making a huge deal about it going viral. Well, when everybody, when anybody says stuff like that, like, I have this one video that did so well, and, like, they, they just bring it up out of the blue, though. I'm like, mm, like, why are you keep on bringing that up, right? And I'm like, did she specifically buy views for this video? Like, a lot of people do that, okay? Like, if you look at somebody's views and they're like 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 80,000, and then that video is like a sponsored video or it opens a door for them. Like, people ask me all the time, how can you tell what people's videos are um, if they buy views and subs on them? Well, there's a couple people that I watch, if you want to know the truth, okay? There's probably four or five people that I watch on a pretty regular basis. And if you look, their videos will start and they'll be like 20,000, 
30,000, 34,000, 38,000 over the period of like six hours, okay? And then they'll kind of like grow like this and over like eight, nine hours, they'll be like at 40,000 views. What they don't know, okay, is that Peter Mon's out there watching them. So then like at one o'clock in the morning, they'll have like, let's say, 48,000 views, okay? And then I'll refresh it because I'm watching my shows. And so like, you know, once every couple hours, I'll go through and I'll look at all their channels. And then all of a sudden, that video's got 116,000 views. So from like 1 to 2.30 in the morning, it got like 60,000 views. That don't happen on nobody's channel, okay? Nobody's channel. I'm telling you right now, okay? It's not honest progression. That's how you can kind of catch on. The other thing that you can catch on is when you look at people's videos, right? And if their video views, like if tomorrow, okay, if tomorrow I did a video and the video got like 90,000 views on it, and I'm getting like right now averaging less than 10,000 views, if tomorrow I got 90,000 views on a video, unless it was like Colleen Ballinger came out and apologized to all of her victims, or it was a huge story, okay? Unless it was like a huge story, but if it was like every other thing, like let's just say, like the other day I did the Ashley Madison thing, then I did a QA, and a then I did another Q&A. If I did tomorrow a QA and a and that video had 90,000 views on it, I hope that your Scooby-Doo ears would go up, and you'd be like, no, this is, this is weird, right? And typically what you can see is that that's a setup for a sponsorship, because they're getting ready to do a sponsorship, or that video itself is sponsored, because a lot of sponsors will say, on a sponsorship, you have to hit so many views. Like, you have to get, like, 60,000 views or 40,000 views on this video, right? Like, they'll say that. they'll Because they'll want to see your analytics and things before they'll work with you. Many companies. And I don't ever send anybody my shit. And when people say that to me, I'm like, no, you reached out to me. I'm not sending my personal information. This is not, like, we're not playing that business game, okay? So, and they'll, they'll still be willing to work with me, all right? So, because people know that I can sell shit. Because I don't talk about that much stuff over here. And I'm real and authentic about it. And so if I'm going to talk about something, people know that I really stand behind it. Because I show so many things that I never link an affiliate link to, right? I've done that forever. Well, I'm starting to think that maybe I need to start linking affiliate links. That's one of my goals for turning 52. This is my birthday month. I turned 52 on the 29th. Happy birthday to you. But that don't matter because I'm going to see Stevie next tomorrow night. But anyway, that's the other thing that you can see. Is that it's like a setup, right? Like they got like 20, 20. 20, 20, 80, right? Like, it don't make sense, okay? I mean, this is just common sense of how you can look at things. You can see where they can, like, they buy it for just one video. They're stupid. Because if it were me and I was going to buy views for videos, first of all, all my videos would be sitting at 60 to 100,000 views, okay? And I'd be buying them on every video. Now, there's a couple people out there that are like that, too. And those are the people that I watch, right? That are, let's say, their videos hit between, like, 100 and 150, 60,000 views regularly, right? But those are the videos that, if you look at them, they start real slow, okay? They start 20, 30, and, and they're videos that nobody would watch, all right? They're like my Go Ask Alice video. They're like videos that, like, of shit that happened five years ago. And then all of a sudden, between one and two o'clock in the morning, they hit, like, 140,000 views. I'm like, no, uh-uh. Like, you literally just got 80,000 views. 80,000 people ru rushed over here to watch this video between one and two o'clock in the morning. You're not even smart with the dispersing of the views. Because you can buy programs that will disperse views over a period of time, Okay. And I can get on here and I can say this because people have accused me of buying subs and views and stuff in the past. Listen, do you think if I was buying views, my videos would be sitting at 6,000 views? No, ma'am, okay? Plus, when I started this, and I have said this for years on this channel, okay? I didn't care what my views and my subs were. I just wanted to look at that number and know that it was real, okay? Because at the end of the day, those people know it's fake. The thing is that I, I think we've now entered this world where sponsorships, gifting, opportunities are very lucrative. So if it looks like you have a bigger channel or more views and you're getting, like one of the things that's surprising to me, I will say, is like people that had a following years ago, Daniel Prada is a good example of this, okay? People that had a following years ago, like when he was with Joey Graceffa, he had a pretty big following, right? Like his name could sell something. His videos get about the same, if not less, views than my videos get now. His pictures definitely get less likes than my pictures do, okay, on Instagram, which, I mean, that's not saying anything. I don't get that many. But he gets these sponsorships, and I'm like, who's paying you for the audience that you don't have? You're not selling anything. They won't get repeat sponsorships unless you know somebody in the company, like Drunk Elephant. He said he has a friend that works at Drunk Elephant, which is why he continues to get the Drunk Elephant thing, right? You know, so like in just total discretion, like with Adam and Eve, um, you know, like I continue to sell units on Adam and Eve, which is why Adam and Eve continues to work with me. I continue to work with them because they're a brand with a purpose. They give 20% of their proceeds to HIV and um, 
HIV and AIDS prevention around the world. And I love a business with a mission, okay? So that's why I continue to work with them. Plus, they've been very, very kind to me through the years. So why wouldn't I, right? But it's interesting to me when you see these people that, like, they have, like, their their numbers look huge. Like, if you look at Daniel Prada, his follower count on Instagram and his subscriber count on YouTube looks big. But the views don't match. He's not getting views. So if you're if somebody out there that's wanting to do a collab with them, it almost would make more sense to spend the money on, let's say, an influencer that has 20,000 subscribers on YouTube and is getting, let's say, 10 to 15,000 views a video, right? And there are beauty influencers like that. And the reason, and I'm, I'm bringing this up for a point because this is going to come into play with Michaela Nagara and Jaclyn Hill in a second. The reason why micro influencers are sometimes making more money than these macro influencers, these OGs in the beauty influencer space, is because if you have 20,000 subscribers, let's say, okay, but you're getting, let's say, Five to 10,000 views per video. That's 50% viewership. Nobody gets 50% viewership except for micro influencers. You know, it's like interesting when I like on my, my Peter Watches TV channel, I've been getting reached out to by a lot of companies, okay? Wanting to send me the pilot episode of their first show that's premiering in the fall and things like that. Why? That channel is sitting at 8,300 subscribers and I'm very grateful for that. I got like 300 off that Ashley Madison documentary alone. Hey! Cheaters. Life is short. Have an affair. Um, and so they re started reaching out to me. Well, when you look at that Ashley Madison video, I've got like 5,000 views, okay? I've got 8,000 subscribers. That's over 50% of your sh of people watch that, that video. Like, that's good. That's why micro-influencers are getting a lot of sponsorships. But can they compete with people like Michaela Nagara, right? <clears throat> so Michaela Nagara does this video of this turd, turd, it's T-I-R, T-I-R, turd, turd uh, makeup, right? Well, it goes viral. And as a result, now she Fs up in her TikTok, okay? Because she says, they knew I was going to be in Korea. But then later she says, because they're a Korean beauty brand. She says, they knew I was going to be in Korea. But then later she says, they set this whole thing up for me, right? Then in, the, in the, the hashtags, the only thing that she has that pertains to any of this being a sponsorship is gifted, okay? It says gifted. Now, Cody's with her. So when it said gifted, I was like, oh, okay, girl, happy Pride Month. <laughs> Y'all are like, what, did, what is he talking about? For those of you that don't know what gifted means, okay? For the three gay guys that watch my videos, y'all are howling right now, okay? What gifted means. Gifted in the gay community means you're gifted, okay? You're gifted. <laughs> like, it's a treat to open them pants, you know what I'm saying? It's, you're gifted. So when she said that as a hashtag... First of all, I started laughing because I was like, what is this hashtag gifted, okay? It's not sponsored. It's not ad. It's not, you know, free review. It's none of that. It's gifted, okay? So I started laughing because just of the use of the word. But second of all, I was like, so she, she, her way of explaining that they done paid for a trip, okay? Now, let me just tell you. About two years ago, there, or maybe a year and a half ago, there was a bunch of influencers that were flown to Australia, okay? TikToker, Instagrammer, Chris Olsen, that's be best friends with Megan Trainer. he was one of the people that went on this trip, okay? And it was a trip that was put on by, like, the Tourism Board of Australia. Well, he did this TikTok or Instagram reel where he was like, pick my destination of where I'm going to go, and then he was going to get on a plane and go there, right? And he acted like he just spun through and like it picked Australia, and then he went there. Well, there were a bunch of influencers that went there, okay? And they were all put on this, like, they went on these different excursions and things like that. The whole thing was put on by the Tourism Board of Australia. Well, none of them disclosed it. None of them disclosed it. And they were told that they were supposed to disclose it, okay? By the Tourism Board. All the paperwork came out and everything like that. And so it shows that these influencers don't want to disclose, okay? I was talking to somebody that I know the other day. And I was like, what does your paperwork say about sponsorships? Like, have you ever got a sponsorship that says, don't disclose? <clears throat> and they said to me, and this is somebody that I know that does a lot of sponsorships. And they said, I've only ever got one that's, that worded it in a way, because the paperwork would never say that. The paperwork, they want to cover their ass, because the company can get fined too, right? So anyway, so most companies are like, no, you, I mean, most videos that I've ever done a sponsorship for, they want to see the video before it goes out there. They want to see what you said to make sure that they covered their ass, you know, that you disclosed appropriately that it was a sponsorship and things like that. So she does this viral video of tur tur, tur review, okay? Doesn't disclose anything about it, whether it was sent to her or whatever. So then she gets, um, 
sent to Korea. Now, there's a huge scandal about this because there was another influencer, like a smaller influencer, and she got sent, um, I think it was like a Chanel bag, and it was like a very small Chanel bag. They sent her a Chanel bag and no trip to Korea. Michaela Nagara, with her numbers, they sent her to Korea a tour of the factory, a tour of the store, okay? Gave her a lifetime supply of their makeup. They gave uh, Cody a Gucci sweatshirt or something like that. It's ugly. It's never anything I would even buy or own myself. Anyway, if Cody wants that much Gucci, he might want to go with Jeffree Star. I'm just, I'm just saying. Nathan, Nathan, listen. He was dressed to the nines, okay, in Gucci couture, okay? Not Gucci off the rack, all right? So you might want to uh, think, if you, Cody, if when you're looking for a paycheck next time, you might want to look for Jeffree Star next time because he does Gucci couture, okay? Not Gucci off the rack. So this is going to stop. Hold on just a second. Okay, we're back. So anyway, so Cody and uh, Michaela and uh, uh, Michaela and Mrs. Michaela, they go to Korea to go visit this tour tour thing. Well, a tier tier or whatever it is, okay? Makeup thing. Well, she doesn't say in there, and she says gifted, okay? Well, that's deceivious. What's gifted? Is the makeup, she says in there, they gave me a lifetime supply and all this kind of stuff, but she doesn't say anything about in exchange for this video that she did, all right? So, they give her all this stuff, and then they give her a Birkin, girl, an Aramis Birkin. I'm like, when I saw this, I was like, that is the ugliest Birkin I have ever seen in my entire life. No, true story, it is, okay? It's, girl, she's small, first of all, okay? She ain't no special edition. <laughs> Listen, I'm not that been out of shape about Birkins anyway, and I actually went into this in another video, but have y'all seen Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen with their Birkins lately? So they're using a Birkin the way that you're supposed to use it, okay? And the woman that actually invented the Birkin, um, when they show her, like in this article with Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen are using the same Birkin they had from like 20 years ago. It's all beat up and things like that. That's how a Birkin's supposed to be, okay? It's not supposed to be like Lisa Hochstein on The Real Housewives of Miami with 400 perfect condition Birkins sitting in a closet. That's not how a Birkin's supposed to look. The Birkin was originally made so that it could be like, you could just throw it in the ground and things like that. And people are like, oh, no, not, not, my, not my Birkin. You got to have it from the hanging thing. So she throws this Birkin out there because it's probably a $20,000 bag, $30,000 bag, right? It is, so, I mean, this is like the most plain Jane Birkin you've ever seen in your entire life, okay? That she gonna wear with a good Gap sweatshirt, a pair of baggy jeans, and clunky, clunky gym shoes to the Target. <laughs> she gonna wear a Birkin, girl, okay? I'm like, you done just wasted that Birkin on somebody. But this is the other thing that's interesting to me, right? Okay, is that the reason why the Birkin is so famous is because they are so impossibly hard to get. Like, you have to be a regular shopper at Aramis to be on their list, okay? Then you have to be on a list to, like, actually... I mean, I have friends of mine... <clears throat> that have these purses, and it's, like, such a struggle to get, the, like, an exact color. If you watch any reality TV, you can see it. Lisa Black on Real Housewives, or not Lisa Black, Leah Black on Real Housewives of Miami, when she was trying to help Lisa Hochstein get her very first uh, Birkin, like, 20 years, 12 years ago or something like that, like, she had to call up somebody that she knew, and they brought over, like, three Birkins, and he was, like, they were, like, sec like secondhand Birkins. Like, you cannot just go and call up Aramis and be like, yeah, I want a red crocodile Birkin. Okay, well, it will be waiting for me tomorrow. You have to be, like, on a list, okay? And so, like, they've, like, cut through all that stuff by buying her a Birkin. Well, what that does is it says to everybody else... If you get a viral video of our makeup, not only will we send you to Korea for a world trip, okay, and give you a lifetime worth of makeup, but we'll also buy you a luxury bag. We'll buy your partner luxury clothes. They've got all kinds of stuff sitting up in there, right? Well, here's the thing, okay? If you know that you could possibly get a Birkin, okay, or a Chanel bag or anything off of a review that could possibly go viral over this stuff, and you're smaller to a mid-range to even a bigger creator, what is your necessity to give an honest review, okay? Because a lot of these people are slimy shady out here, these beauty influencers. So if they've been always wanting to get a Birkin or a Chanel purse or something like that, right? Like, I mean, I think a Chanel love purse today, like the big ones, they run for like 15 grand, right? I mean, that's a car for some people. That's more than a car for some people, okay? And so, you know, if they know, if I give this brand an honest review, then there's a possibility that I'm going to get sent to Korea and I might get a lifetime of their makeup. First of all, Michaela has so many companies sending her lifetimes of makeup. She never needs another piece of makeup in her entire life, okay? 
So it really takes away from the credibility of the influencer that's doing the review of this makeup. This brand has, because they have to disclose that they got gifted this stuff, okay? This is where Michaela, like, she shows all this stuff, and I don't think it's very smart. This is going to be the eventual takedown of Michaela because she seems bought is how she seems, right? Because she's not going to come out now. If they put out another, like, let's say they put out some makeup, she's not going to come out and say, yeah, this is the shittiest foundation in the world, right? She's not going to do that. She just won't make the video is what she'll do, right? So then you got micro-influencers that are smaller, okay, and they're giving honest reviews, but their videos aren't going viral because they're giving honest reviews. So this company is now buying positive reviews from people because they're putting out the message that if you give us a positive review, there's a chance that you could get a Birkin. They sent this other girl, Chanel Purse, they sent somebody else a purse. So there's no, they're sending these purses out left and right, okay? So anyway... So that's the whole backstory on Michaela Nagara and the Aramis, the Birkin purse, okay? Which I feel like, in all honesty, I feel like Birkins are kind of 2016. I'm kind of like over them, okay? I, I listen, I'm just like, the Birkin to me is kind of like, I mean, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, the reason I brought that up is because like, they're like reinventing the Birkin in a new way, okay? Michaela Nagara ain't gonna throw that thing on the floor at Walmart. She don't, I mean, th this to her, I, it's just, it's kind of, in all honesty, it's just like embarrassing to even watch, okay? And this is the thing, is that they know they can do this with Michaela. That's kind of like, they're kind of like, to some, uh, uh, some degree, taking advantage of her naivete about this whole world because she's like beauty influencer OG 2016, getting collabs, getting this, get for the first time. And she should have watched what they did before because like with Jaclyn Hill, Jaclyn Hill's a good example of this. I mean, she got a whole closet full of Birkins too, right? And when people said the money started going to her head, that's when people stopped watching Jaclyn Hill. That was long before all this stuff happened with Jaclyn, right? And so they were like, she's a different person than when she first started. Well, Michaela's a different person today, so it's going to bite her in the ass. So Jaclyn Hill gets in this TikTok, okay? And in this TikTok... She's showing her beauty favorites even though she don't like beauty anymore, okay? And um, I have to just tell you this one comment that I found on here that was interesting because she completely disses Morphe, which I thought was a very, very interesting. Um, somebody said, Jacqueline, is there a reason why you don't talk or use uh, Morphe about Morphe? And she responded and said, I just think their products have gone downhill. Down Jacqueline Hill. <laughs> if they launch bomb products the way they used to, I would love to support. They need a major rebrand back moment. And somebody said, Linda won't like reading that. And she responded and said, I can promise you she's fine. And somebody said, wow, BFF goals. And somebody else responded and said, I don't think it matters to her. They already sold their company, if I'm not mistaken. So, and somebody said, oh, now that makes sense. But uh, should not she should she not still feel like it's her own baby and therefore remains attached to its success in a way it was never her baby so she doesn't care right so said I totally agree with you um, they need to up their game and people go on here and talk about this have you seen the new blushes question mark she doesn't respond to any of these things okay and so um, somebody said I'm so proud of you for staying uh, your true opinions and just the truth follow her from the beginning okay Jaclyn Hill has never come out against Morphe until Jaclyn Hill, Jaclyn Cosmetics, Forma owns Morphe, okay? Forma and Morphe are basically one. When Forma said they were going to close down Jaclyn Cosmetics and if she wanted to buy it, she could, and she didn't want to buy her own brand, that's when she started coming out and talking against Morphe. Not when she had codes, not when she had something to benefit greatly off of because her brand was owned by Morphe, Forma Brands, okay? She never talked shit about Morphe before then, ever. In fact, she put a tweet out six months ago talking about it was making her so sad that these stores were closing and blah, 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 blah. And she could remember opening them with Linda. Now she's full on coming out and dissing it. Conveniently, after her brand is no longer with Forma Brands, right? But somebody wants to tell Jacqueline Hill they want to congratulate her on always telling her truth. If Jacqueline Hill were going to come out and tell the truth, what she would tell us is the whole story about how she sold her brand to Morphe and Forma and how she never really owned her brand, never was the CEO of the brand, was just a creative face of it. So how anybody can get on here and say, oh, I love you for telling your truth. Where's the truth in, in, ja in anything that Jacqueline Hill has to say? I'm confused about that, okay? Somebody said they stopped making her money, so she has no reason to discuss them anymore. I 100% agree with that. Somebody said, I feel like since Jacqueline was less involved with their products, they have gone downhill massively. Well, Jacqueline Hill was never... Okay. Um, pro somebody said probably because of that bankruptcy suit. Dot, dot, dot. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But this is the comment that I was sent by Tanya. Hey, Tanya! How you doing, girl? 
she said, because she goes on here, she starts talking really great about these turd turd products that, you know, Michaela got her Birkin. And so she starts talking about them and like how great they are. She don't even know how to pronounce them any better than I do. Okay, go watch it. It's like she goes into it right away. And she's like, I don't know how, is it turd turd? She don't even know how to pronounce them, but she is singing their praises, right? So here's the comment somebody left. Hope you get that turd turd Birkin, girl. <laughs> I lived. I lived. I was like, oh, girl, they done come for you, girl. They done come for you. But listen, she comes from Michaela, okay? So then the next comment is from Jacqueline. She responds to it. And she goes, oh, my God, with a uh, with a skull emoji. I thought Jeffree Star was the only one that used that emoji. He used to he used to text me that skull emoji and um, with the talking about Manny and Laura and Gabriel Zamora and all them. Anyway, she said, oh, my God, uh, OMG, uh, skull emoji, nah, that's reserved for Michaela. And I was like, oh, girl, okay. well, you were her mentor, honey. <laughs> you were her mentor on how to turn nothing into something, okay? All right, all living on a lie. <laughs> like the Bon Jovi song. That wasn't living on a lie, but that should be. Did y'all hear that Millie Bobby Brown is now Millie Bobby Brown Bon Jovi? <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown married Bon Jovi's son. Did y'all know that? I am... <laughs> I am so confused about what is going on in the world, but I have to just tell you the crossover I kind of live for, okay? Millie Bobby Brown is the star of the greatest show about the 80s. That took place in Indiana, by the way. Stranger Things, okay? And then she marries the son of one of the greatest glam rock ba bands from the 80s. <laughs> living on a prayer! <laughs> Jacqueline Hill would be living on a lie while Millie Bobby Brown be living on a prayer. Okay. So then all these people put, like, these dead emojis, dead emojis. Somebody said, literally, the only reason she mentioned it. Exactly. We know that that's the only reason Jacqueline Hill mentioned it, because she wants to get a free Birkin from them. Somebody said, do we really need that mean high school drama energy? Jacqueline is the most authentic woman on this app. Be nice. Ah! <laughs> oh, my God. The most authentic person on this app, girl. What now? Have you seen Thumbelina the Squirrel, girl? Have you seen Thumbelina? Let's go in here. Let's look up the definition of authentic. Okay, authentic definition. Not false or imitation. Real, actual, and authentic. Oh, it says on here, example, authentic Cockney accent. True to one's own personality, spirit, or character. If Jacqueline Hill, I'll tell you the moment that we got Jacqueline Hill's authentic authenticity, okay? was when she was at the dinner table rubbing her forehead with a $100 bill and tossing it to the side like she don't care, okay? We got Jacqueline Hill being authentic, all right, when she wore the cancel dress to the Halloween party, okay? Y'all think that Jacqueline Hill getting in a video when two weeks ago she said she don't want anything to do with makeup anymore that made me speculate she was going to go into the style of lo lifestyle vlogging? Now, two weeks later, after Michaela came out with this uh, viral video about Turd Turd, that she's in there singing out the praises of Turd Turd. Y'all think that's authentic? <laughs> Who, girl? She got one fan out there, girl, that's still deceived. Okay. Oh, um, this makes me kind of sad for some of these people in here that still believe this. Okay. Somebody said, sorry if you perceived my comment that way, but it wasn't hers that brought that energy. I don't like it, but I hope she gets a bag. does get a bag, girl. <laughs> Somebody said, no more Mor Morphe brushes. Gasp. <laughs> Somebody said, um... What is your church or foundation shade? She doesn't respond because she don't know, girl. She doesn't know about this bread. Um, and then they go in and talk about this Morphe thing again. Then all these people, this is so interesting, are asking about um, stuff like her necklace and all this kind of stuff. What's interesting is this uh, Jaclyn Hill uh, account that people had thought for years was Jaclyn Hill. And then they came out and said, no, it wasn't Jaclyn Hill. And then people were like, it's Jaclyn Hill's sister and whatever are on here telling people where to go. They're the first person. Each person that says, like, I like your necklace. Where's your necklace? She's the first person under there saying where to go get it. Not Jacqueline Roxanne because they didn't close down. Amazon. And then you can go, because she's got all this stuff linked now on her Instagram. So her TikTok is to send people to her Instagram where she links the things and says people were asking for it. I think it's all a setup. I think these are fake accounts where she's, like, asking herself, where'd you get that necklace? And then somebody's sending her over to her Instagram. Girl, she's a scam. <laughs> She is a scam. I kind of like in 2024 wish that Jaclyn Hill would just come out and just, I mean, people want her to be like, they say she's authentic. I would love for Jaclyn Hill to just come out and be authentic. Okay. I would love us to I'd love for her to show us Jaclyn Hill behind the, the, the veil of Oz. That's who I would like to see. Okay. 
Because I have heard Jaclyn Hill talks mad shit about people. Oh my God, so many people back in the day told me that, okay? I would love to hear Jaclyn Hill talk some mad shit about people. She's good. She was good friends with Lipstick Nick. I don't know if she is anymore. But she was good friends with Lipstick Nick. Lipstick Nick was friends with Jeffree Star, James Charles. She'd been friends with everybody problematic in there. You think her and Lipstick Nick aren't talking shit about people? What do you do when you get together with your friend? You talk shit. Like, Girl, you know you do. We all do now. Come on. Okay? She wants to ask all, act all prim and proper. Then act like, what, Birkin? Who? That, that's from Michaela. Girl, you ain't never heard about this makeup until Michaela got her Birkin. And now you out here shading Morphe, too. And people are calling you authentic. And I can see right through it, girl. You never once said any negative thing about Morphe or anything to do with Forma Brands until your brand was no longer associated with them anymore. Until you didn't even own that brand because you never did. They offered you to buy... That's, I mean, everybody knows that. They offered you to buy your own brand. The brand that you were so upset wasn't successful. That was your moment, girl, to say, I'm going to buy my own brand back, okay, from Forma. I, I have so I know so much about these formulas and the palettes and everything like that. I'm gonna own it and I'm gonna show Forma that this could have been a moneymaker. You didn't do that, girl. You wanna cry a river about how what happened with your makeup. What ha you, you say what happened? I'm upset about what happened with my makeup brand. What happened with your makeup brand, girl? You sold it 10 years ago, the intellectual rights to Forma, and they've owned it ever since, and you've acted like you were the CEO and never come out and address that. So we're supposed to believe that you don't want a Birkin? She would get gifted that Birkin, and then she would be listing that Birkin with a non-disclosed affiliate link. That's what would happen. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.